them, Josh. Hey, so this is going to be Wednesday, October 4th. We turned in Booker Force Day. Uh, we're wearing pink because we're adorable. Uh, coming up, make sure you're going to read our, or get into our flowers for Algernon story, which, you, which is right there. Um, and so with that one, hopefully you downloaded it. We're going to be talking about it today. Uh, and then also make sure you download Retrieve Reformation and Necklace. They're not doing it until next Friday. I'll let you want to read it before that because we're going to have questions next week on our review game. Uh, and then flowers for Algernon. When we, I gave you guys a little heads up about the story yesterday as far as like, the overall idea. Um, what's going to make you frustrated here is we're going to have sort of a difficult discussion, but you're not going to have nearly as much time to talk as you're going to want, which probably going to make you guys grumpy. But I wanted to get into, so I even put a quick discussion up there. Do you guys know what genetic engineering is? Yeah. So that's going to connect to our story. Judy? What genetic engineering is? Yeah. So it's brain. like when you... Um, It does, we are using our brains. It's like when they test something. <laughs> what? what is it? How do you describe it? Zoe? Um, when people go into and like change your genetics and you're like either like smarter or like don't have like a disability or you're like better at it. And so that's and right now they're not doing it with humans, but they are doing it with animals and they're doing it with crops. Wait, How they can make like corn. corn. Uh, so they can grow corn in Africa, That's where normally corn sorry. requires a whole lot of water. They can genetically engineer it and make it so it can grow with much, much less water. Thus, we have changed it. It's still corn. It's just not the corn we're used to. And then they can do the same thing where they've been genetically engineering like pets over years. They can make the cat, dogs and cats that are non-allergenic. Uh, it's because they have found ways to slowly change them over the years, and that's the type of genetic modification, the type of genetic engineering. That's going to connect to our story. Uh, my quick question will be, do you support the idea of genetic technology or genetic engineering? And this is not, unfortunately, going to be a discussion. This is just going to be by a show of hands. As we get into it, before we get into our story, do you support us moving forward with this? Because that is part of the debate. Should we mess with the body? Should we mess with crops? Should we mess with animals? Or should we not touch them whatsoever? So that's my opening question here. Raise your hand if you say, yes, I support it, and I think it's good, making the world a better place. All right? Raise your hand if you say, nope, I think it's going to be scary, and bad things are going to happen. All right? That's all I was just going for. So you have an idea of sort of where you sit. The joy of this, of course, is there's no right or wrong. That's the joy of opinions. Um, and plus, we probably have no effect of changing it. It's just going to be a matter of writing it out. It's like saying whether or not you like rain, whether you hate rain or not, you can't really rain. change it. Uh, does any good come from doing the surgeries that alter us for genetics? Nope. Zoe? Um, well, like some people are allergic to like dogs and stuff, and so if they like change them so they're hyperallergenic, then, then they can have a dog. Then we can experience that without sneezing and all that. Sure. Jessa? My mom's disabled, and she has like, certain diseases, so if they could like change that, she could be like, more around the house. Absolutely. And that's one of the big things they're looking into is being able to figure out like when a woman is pregnant, they can go into when the baby is still being developed and they can figure out if a kid is going to be born disabled or born with a disease that's going to kill them, they can get rid of it. And they can go in there and say, we found out that there are certain immunities we can go in there and fix. And instead of having a baby born crippled, we can change that. That's part of genetic engineering. Yeah. And it is, and the fact that they're trying to adjust them and change them so that they can, like I mentioned with corn, that would be an example of it. Then on the other side, does any bad come? If you're talking about it's only good, why would anybody be against it? What bad things could there be, Elizabeth? So I agree with the part about the plants, but with the animals and humans, the things could go wrong, um, and it could cause things instead of fixing Well, technically, isn't taking ibuprofen when you have a headache kind of cheating? <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, you're fixing a thing that's wrong with you instead of just trying to like gut it out and cry your way through it. But it is a way of looking. Sri Lanka. So when we when we're um, genetic. Genetic engineering. Yeah. Okay. Um, or uh, altering a plant and they're putting it in some place that doesn't have any water, like Africa. Um, the sign, like when you put it there. 
scientists might come across a problem that they've never experienced, and that could affect the whole population in a negative way, like killing them. <laughs> I do dangerous. see killing mass populations as a negative. I'm glad we're on the same page there. And now we get to get into our story. Uh, I'm going to start reading it to help you out because it's going to be a little confusing. It's going to talk about these things that are called, he calls it a raw shock test. Um, you probably know it by a different name if you've ever heard of it before, and probably not a raw shock. You might know it by what's called a raw shock test. And it's when they show you an ink blot and they say, oh, yeah. what do you see? And so that's what they're going to start off with. And so what this is is a classic raw shock test where they show you this and they say, what do you see in it? And the idea being is it tells us more about your personality. If you're like, I see butterflies flying on a meadow, you're like, oh, you're good for you. Like, I see death, fire. Like, oh, okay. I see two people. I see two wolves on the side. I see kids excitedly losing points. I see birds. So, flowers for Algernon. If that's all it took to get you guys excited. Okay. We'll go back to here. I had no idea you guys were so excited already. Once again, this is going to be told from the viewpoint of a person who definitely not the smartest and definitely having some issues with the whole language thing. So that's why as you get into it, you're going to see issues with the grammar. Progress Report 1, March 5th, 1965. Dr. Strauss says I should write down what I think and everything that happens to me from now on. I don't know why, but he says it's important, because they will see if they will use me. I hope they use me. Miss Kinian says maybe they can make me smart. I want to be smart. My name is Charlie Gordon. I am 37 years old. I have nothing more to write now, so I will close for today. Progress Report 2, March 6th. I had a test today. I think I failed it. And I think maybe now they won't use me. What happened is a nice young man was in the room, and he had some white cards and ink spilled all over them. He said, Charlie, what do you see on this card? I was very scared, even though I had my rabbit's foot in my pocket, because when I was a kid, I always failed tests in school, and I spilled ink, too. I told him, I saw an ink blot. He said, yes, it made me feel good. I thought that was all, but when I got up to go, he said, Charlie, we're not through yet. Then I don't remember so good, but he wanted me to say what was in the ink. I didn't see nothing in the ink, but he said there was pictures there, only people saw some pictures. I couldn't see any pictures. I really tried. I held the card close up and then far away. Then I said if I had my glasses, I could see better. I usually only wear my glasses in the movies or TV, but I said they're in the closet in the hall. I got them. Then I said, let me see that card again. I bet I'll find it now. I tried hard, but I only saw the ink. I told him, maybe I need new glasses. He wrote something down on the paper, and I got scared of failing the test. I told him it was a very nice ink blot with little points all around the edges. He looked very sad, so that wasn't it. I said, please, let me try again. I'll get it in a few minutes, because I'm not so fast sometimes. I'm a slow reader, too, in Miss Kenyon's class, for slow adults, but I'm trying very hard. He gave me a chance with another card two kinds of ink spilled on it, red and blue. He was very nice and talked slow like Miss Kinian does. And he explained it to me that it was a raw shock. He said, people see things in the ink. I said, show me where. He said, think. I told him, I think a ink blot, but that wasn't right either. He said, what does it remind you? Pretend something. I closed my eyes for a long time to pretend. I told him, I pretend a fountain pen of ink leaking all over a tablecloth. I don't think I passed the raw shock test. So, once again, he, he thinks there's actually the picture in the background that he's supposed to see, not using imagination, because apparently he's low enough, that, and that's what happens sometimes. When your intelligence is low, one of the first things that will go sometimes is your imagination and being able to see things that aren't there. So that's one of Charlie's issues. March 7th. Dr. Strauss and Dr. Niemer say it don't matter about the ink blots. They said that maybe they will still use me. I said Miss Kinian never gave me tests like that one, only spelling and reading. They said Miss Kinian told that I was her bestest pupil in the adult night school because I tried the hardest and I really wanted to learn. They said, how come you went to the adult night school all by yourself, Charlie? How did you find it? I said, I asked people and somebody told me where I should go to learn to read and spell good. They said, why did you want to? 
And I told them, because all my life, I wanted to be smart and not dumb. But it's very hard to be smart. They said, you know it'll probably be temporary. I said, yes. This idiot told me. I don't care if it hurts. Later, I had more crazy tests today. The nice lady who gave it to me told me the name, and I asked her how to spell it so I could write it in my progress report. Thematic apperception test. I don't know the first two words, but I know what test means. You got to pass it or you get bad marks. This test looked easy because I could see the pictures. Only this time, she didn't want me to tell her the pictures. Well, that mixed me up. She said, make up stories about the people in the pictures. This is, I'll show you, there's another Warshock picture. This is a thematic apperception test. They give you a picture, and this time you got excited because you can actually see the thing in there. They don't want to know what you see. They say, write a, tell me a story. What's going on in this one? Once again, it gives us something about your personality. You see happy things or dark things and stuff like that. Is this actually the picture they're going to tell you something? I don't think so. But it doesn't get much into the details of the picture. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. I told her, how do you tell stories about people you've never met? I said, why should I make up lies? I never tell anymore because I always get caught. She told me this test and the other one, the raw shock, was for getting personality. I laughed so hard. I said, how can you get that thing from ink blots and photos? She got sore and put her pictures away. I don't care. It was silly. I guess I failed that test, too. Later, some men in white coats took me to a different part of the hospital and gave me a game to play. It was like a race with a white mouse. They called the mouse Algernon. Algernon was in a box with a lot of twists and turns, like all kinds of walls, and they gave me a pencil and paper with lines in it and lots of boxes. On one side, it said start, and on the other end, it said finish. They said it was amazed and that Algernon and me had the same amazed to do. I didn't see how we could have the same amazed if Algernon had a box and I had a paper, but I didn't say nothing. Anyway, there wasn't time because the race started. Oh, hang on. There's another picture for you to look at of the thematic. Maybe that one doesn't feel as dark to you. I don't know. These are all the ones I got from no, the actual adversary tests. Them so what they're having him do now is he gets to erase the mouse to sort of see how well he does. He gets the exact same maze, paper version, and they put the mouse in there, then he has to sort of have them both start at the same time to see which one can finish first. So they start the other end said finish. They said it was a maze, it was like paper hack. One of the men had a watch he was trying to hide, so I wouldn't see it, so I tried not to look, and you know, that made me nervous. Anyway, that test made me feel worse than all the others because they did it over ten times with different amaze. And Algernon won every time. I didn't know that mice were so smart. Maybe that's because Algernon's a white mouse. Maybe white mice are smarter than other mice. March 8th. They're going to use me. I'm so excited. I can hardly write. Dr. Niemer and Dr. Strauss had an argument about it at first. Dr. Niemer was in the office when Dr. Strauss brought me in. Dr. Niemer was worried about using me, but Dr. Strauss told him Miss Kinian recommended me the best from all the people who she was teaching. I like Miss Kinian because she's a very smart teacher. She said, Charlie, you're going to have a second chance. If you volunteer for this experiment, you might get smart. I don't know if it'll be permanent, but there's a chance. That's why I said, okay, even when I was scared, because she said it was an operation. She said, don't be scared, Charlie. You've done so much with so little... I think you deserve it most of all. Oh, so I got you. scared when Dr. Niemer and Dr. Strauss argued about it. Dr. Strauss said I had something that was very good. He said I had good motivation. I never even knew I had that. I felt proud when he said that not everybody with an IQ of 68 had that thing. I don't know what it is or where I got it, but he said Algernon had it too. Algernon's motivation is the cheese they put in his box. But it can't be that, because I didn't eat any cheese this week. Then he told Dr. Niemer something I didn't understand, so while they were talking, I wrote down some of the words. He said, Dr. Niemer, I know Charlie's not what you had in mind as the first of your new breed of intellect. I, I couldn't get the word. Do you guys know what word that is? Intellectual. Intellectual. Yeah. Superman. But most people, his low mints are host and unquat. They're usually dull, apathetic. 
and hard to reach. He has a good nature. He's interested and eager to please. Do you guys know what the first word is? Low men. Mentality. Mentality. Are hostile. Hostile. Uncooperative. And usually dull. Apathy. And hard to reach. Dr. Niemer said, Remember, you'll be the first human being ever to have his intelligence tripled by surgical means. Dr. Strauss said, Exactly. Look at how well he's learned to read and write for his low mental age. It's as great and achievement as you and I learning Einstein's theory of Relativity. without help. That shows the intentness motivation. It's comparative, a tremendous achievement. It's like you guys are smarter than him. I say we use Charlie. Mr. Boyby, I got an IQ of 69. Then. Good job. You're one higher than him. I didn't get all the words, but it sounded like Dr. Strauss was on my side, and like the other one wasn't. Then Dr. Niemer nodded. He said, all right, maybe you're right. We will use Charlie. When he said that, I got so excited, I jumped up and shook his hand for being so good to me. I told him, thank you, Doc. You won't be sorry for giving me a second chance. And I mean it. Like I told him, after the operation, I'm going to try to be smart. I'm going to try awful hard. March 10th. I'm scared. Lots of the nurses and the people who gave me the test came to bring me candy and wish me luck. I hope I have luck. I got my rabbit's foot and my lucky penny. Only a black cat crossed me when I was coming to the hospital. Dr. Strauss says, don't be superstitious, Charlie. This is science. Anyway, I'm keeping my rabbit's foot with me. I asked Dr. Strauss if I'll beat Algernon in the race after the operation, and he said, maybe. If the operation works, I'll show that mouse I can be as smart as he is. Maybe smarter. Then I'll be able to read better and spell the words good and know lots of things and be like other people. I want to be smart like other people. If it works permanent, it'll make everybody smart all over the world. They didn't give me anything to eat this morning. I don't know what that eating has to do with getting smart. I'm very hungry. Dr. Niemer took away my box of candy. That Dr. Niemer's grouch. Dr. Strauss says I can have it back after the operation. You can't eat before operation. March 15th. The operation didn't hurt. By the way, you have been noticing his spelling in English so far, correct? Why? Yeah. Keep paying attention as we go through now that we've had the operation. The operation didn't hurt. He did it while I was sleeping. They took off the bandages from my head today so I could make a progress report. Dr. Niemer, who looked at some of my other ones, says I spelled progress wrong and told me how to spell it. And report, too. I got to try and remember that. I have a very bad memory for spelling. Dr. Strauss says it's okay to tell about all the things that happened to him. But he says I should tell more about what I feel and what I think. When I told him I don't know how to think, he said try. All the time when the bandages were on my eyes, I tried to think. Nothing happened. And I don't know what to think about. Maybe if I ask him, he'll tell me how I can think now that I'm supposed to get smart. What do smart people think about? Fancy things, I suppose. I wish I knew some fancy things already. March 19th. Nothing's happening. I had lots of tests and different kinds of races with Algernon. I hate that mouse. He always beats me, Dr. Strauss, but I got to play those games. And he said, sometime I got to take those tests over again. Those ink blots are stupid. And those pictures are woman, but I won't make up lies about people. I got a headache from trying to think so much. I thought Dr. Strauss was my friend, but he don't help me. He don't tell me what to think or when I'll get smart. And Miss Kenyon didn't come to see me. I think writing these progress reports are stupid, too. March 23rd. I'm going back to work at the factory. They said it was better I should go back to work, but I can't tell anyone what the operation was for, and I have to come to the hospital for an hour every night after work. They're going to pay me mo money every month for learning to be smart. I'm glad I'm going back to work because I miss my job and all my friends and all the fun we have there. Dr. Strauss says I should keep writing things down, but... I don't have to do it every day, just when I think of something or something special happens. He says, don't get discouraged because it takes time and it happens slow. He says it took a long time with Algernon before he got three times smarter than he was before. That's why Algernon beats me all the time, because he had the operation too. That makes me feel better. I can probably do that amazed faster than a regular mouse. Maybe someday I'll beat him. That'd be something. So far, Algernon looks smart permanent. March 25th. 
I don't have to write progress report on top anymore. Just when I hand it in once a week for Dr. Niemer. I just have to put the date on it. That saves time. We had a lot of fun at the factory today. Joe Carr said, hey, look where Charlie at his operation. What'd they do, Charlie? Put some brains in? I was going to tell them, but I remember Dr. Strauss said no. Then Frank Riley said, what'd you do, Charlie? Forget your key and open your door the hard way? <laughs> that made me laugh. They're really my friends, and they like me. Sometimes somebody will say, hey, look, Joe or Frank or George, he really pulled a Charlie Gordon. I don't know why they say that, but they always laugh. This morning, Amos Borg, who is the four manager at Onigans, used my name when he shouted at Ernie, the office boy. Ernie lost the package. He said, Ernie, for God's sake, why are you trying to be a Charlie Gordon? I don't understand why he said that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, why did you say that's mean? So, are they his friends? No! But, does Charlie think they're his friends? Yes! yes. Is Charlie awesome. bothered by what they do? No! So then, does it matter? Yes! yes. The reason I say that is it's going to play a role in the story coming because up. Because I'm so smart. I don't know. Don't pull a Charlie Don't pull a Charlie here. March 20th. You should never oh, be yeah. in a fight ever. March 28th. <laughs> Dr. Strauss came to my room tonight to see why I didn't come in like I was supposed to. I told him, I don't like to race with Algernon anymore. He said, I don't have to for a while, but I should come in. He had a present for me. I thought it was a little television, but it wasn't. He said, I got to turn it on when I go to sleep. I said, you're kidding. Why should I turn it on when I'm going to sleep? Who ever heard of a thing like that? But he said, if I want to get smart, I got to do what he says. And I told him, I didn't think I was going to get smart. And he puts his hand on my shoulder and said, Charlie, you don't know it yet, but you're getting smarter all the time. You won't notice for a while. I think he was just being nice to make me feel good because I don't look any smarter. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. I asked him when I can go back to the class at Miss Kinnian's school. And he said, I won't go there. He said that Miss Kinnian will come to the hospital and start and teach me their special. Pause. Progress report. Should be... You get no. That'll be... Uh, April 21st is where you're going to try and get to. So our conversation for tomorrow. I will send this out on a remind for you. But we're going to pick up, so we're going to jump a little bit, so you have to read a little bit on your own, get to April 21st, and then we're going to read together after that and talk about what happens so we can stay on target. Uh, I apologize for those of you who are upset with the story already. It's not going to get any easier. <laughs>